Localizing a spinal cord lesion. A 31-year-old man with no significant medical history presents to the hospital following a stab wound to the right mid-thoracic region. A few days later, once the patient is stabilized, a neurological exam shows 2 out of 5 strength in the right lower extremity, 3 plus patellar and Achilles reflexes, and an upgoing right toe. Sensory exam shows impaired vibratory sensation below the level of injury on the right side and loss of pinprick and temperature sensation on the left. How do we localize the lesion? Which pathways are affected? Based on the clinical features, brown sequard syndrome is the most likely etiology. brown sequard syndrome is a functional hemisection of the spinal cord. It presents with upper motor neuron weakness and proprioceptive loss ipsilateral to the side of injury, as well as loss of pain and temperature sensation contralateral to the injury. Common causes are penetrating trauma from a knife or bullet wound, but other causes may include unilateral cord compression, cord ischemia, or an autoimmune disease such as multiple sclerosis. Damage to several spinal cord pathways and structures account for the clinical symptoms and exam findings. Understanding this anatomy can help localize the site of the injury. The corticospinal tracts originate in the motor cortex and decussate in the caudal medulla before descending in the lateral part of the spinal cord to synapse with alpha motor neurons in the anterior horn. Next, the dorsal column and medial lemniscus pathways can pay vibratory, touch, and proprioceptive information from the periphery to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, and then through the dorsal columns to the lower medulla, where they decussate to form the medial lemniscus. Finally, the spinothalamic tracts carry temperature and pain sensation and decussate just above the spinal level where the dorsal sensory root fibers enter the cord in the anterior commissure. Patients with brown sequard syndrome will commonly have physical exam findings ipsilaterally that include loss of proprioception and vibration below the level of the lesion, spastic paralysis and increased deep tendon reflexes below the level of the lesion, extensor plantar response, and often loss of all sensory modalities and flaccid weakness at the level of the lesion due to injury of the anterior horn cells and fibers of the anterior commissure. Contralateral findings include loss of pain, temperature, and non-discriminative touch sensation one or two levels below the lesion. This patient presented with brown sequard syndrome or hemisection of the spinal cord. In this case, the ipsilateral weakness and upgoing toe were from injury to the corticospinal tract. The dorsal horns were also affected, resulting in loss of sensory input at the level of the lesion. Proprioception and vibration sense were impaired ipsilaterally due to the injury of the dorsal columns. Conversely, the patient experienced contralateral loss of pain and temperature sensation below the level of the lesion. This was due to damage of the spinothalamic tract fibers that had crossed caudal to the level of the spinal cord injury. In summary, brown sequard syndrome occurs when there is a hemisection of the spinal cord. Three major spinal cord pathways are involved, the corticospinal tract, dorsal column tract, and spinothalamic tract. Findings include ipsilateral weakness and proprioceptive defects, and contralateral pain and temperature deficits. For more information on brown sequard syndrome, including a review of spinal cord anatomy, please see the course resources. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com slash neurobytes.